A ruptured diaphragm generally indicates a pumping system problem, and replacing only the diaphragm will not solve the larger problem. Inspect the diaphragm for the following. Half moon marks, usually caused by cavitation of the pump, refer to the troubleshooting section. Concentric circular marks, usually caused by cavitation of the pump, refer to the troubleshooting section. Small puncture, usually caused by a sharp foreign object in the fluid or by an ice particle. Diaphragm pulled away from the center screw or from the cylinder sides, usually caused by fluid being frozen in the pump or by overpressurization of the pump. Diaphragm becoming stiff and losing flexibility, usually caused by pumping a fluid that is incompatible with the diaphragm material. Diaphragm is operated at temperatures below its rated capability. Diaphragm edge chewed away, usually caused by overpressurizing the system. If there is evidence of a problem in the hydraulic end of the pump, such as a grinding of the bearings, difficulty in rotating the shaft, or other similar symptoms, you would service the hydraulic end of the pump at this point. See the section of the video titled Hydraulic End Service. After the hydraulic end is serviced, you would resume reinstalling the fluid end of the pump at the section of video titled Install Diaphragms. If you are not going to service the hydraulic end of the pump at this time, continue this presentation by clicking on the procedure on the left entitled Flush Contaminant from Hydraulic End. Now the video will stop and allow you to make your selection. If a diaphragm has ruptured and foreign material or water has entered the oil reservoir, do not operate the pump. Check all diaphragms and replace if necessary, then flush the reservoir completely and refill it with fresh oil. Never leave the pump with foreign material or water in the reservoir or with the reservoir empty. To flush the contaminated oil from the hydraulic end of the pump, first remove the oil fill cap and the oil drain cap and allow all oil and contaminant to drain out of the pump. Replace the drain cap. Fill the reservoir with oil, kerosene, solvent, or other appropriate fluid. Manually turn the pump shaft to circulate the fluid and drain. Please note, if you have EPDM diaphragms, or if food grade oil is in the reservoir, do not use kerosene or solvents. Instead, flush with the same lubricant that is in the reservoir. Pumps with EPDM diaphragms have an E as the seventh digit of the model number. Repeat the flushing procedure. Fill the reservoir with fresh oil, manually turn the pump shaft to circulate the oil, and drain once again. Finally, refill the reservoir. If the oil appears milky, there is still contaminant in the reservoir. Repeat the flushing procedure until the oil appears clean. Once the oil is clean, you are ready to install new diaphragms or reinstall the old ones as appropriate. Now we will see how to inspect and remove the diaphragms. Inspect the diaphragms carefully for wear, chemical attack, rupture, or anything else that may cause diaphragm failure. If the diaphragm needs to be replaced, lift the diaphragm by one edge and turn the pump shaft until the diaphragm pulls up. This will expose machined cross holes in the valve plunger shaft behind the diaphragm. Insert the plunger holder from the water tool kit through one of the holes to hold the diaphragm up. Remove the diaphragm screw, o-ring, and follower in the center of the diaphragm. Remove the diaphragm and inspect it carefully. Now we will see how to reinstall diaphragms. Before reinstalling the diaphragm or installing a new diaphragm, inspect the plunger for any rough surfaces or edges. If there are any rough edges which may cause problems with the diaphragm, smooth the surfaces and edges as necessary with emery cloth or a fine file. If necessary, Screw the plunger tool from the water tool kit into the valve plunger. Pull the valve plunger up until the cross holes in the valve plunger are exposed. Insert the plunger holder from the water tool kit 
through the top hole to hold the plunger away from the cylinder housing and to keep the valve plunger from turning when the diaphragm is being installed. Place the diaphragm onto the plunger ridge side out. Place the O-ring onto the follower screw. Center the diaphragm follower on the diaphragm. Apply a small amount of removable thread locker to the threads of the follower screw. Insert the follower screw with O-ring through the diaphragm follower and diaphragm and screw it into the valve plunger. Hold the plunger holder and torque the follower screw to 18 inch pounds or 2 newton meters. Repeat this procedure for the plungers and diaphragms of the other two cylinders.